on TV Piedmont Channel 60. I'm your host, Brian Carter, alongside Ryan Orlovsky. Get your popcorn ready, because we're putting on a show. You're watching 3 and Out. What's our rundown, Ryan? On the opening tip, we we'll debate on the Super Bowl QBs. We'll hit up our emails on the seventh inning stretch. And on third down, we'll have a special guest to talk about the Super Bowl. As always, if you have questions, comments, or topic suggestions, feel free to email us at 3 outsports at gmail.com. All emailers receive a free 3 and Out pen. You can also check out our MySpace page at myspace slash 3 and Sports and watch us on YouTube by searching for 3 and Out. Easy piece of cake. Super Bowl 43 was a blast to watch. Of course, if you're Ryan, it was Champs, baby. incredible. And for the second straight year, we saw it come down to the wire, this time with the Steelers walking away as champs for the second time in four years. Big Ben showed his legacy when completing the game-winning drive, but Kurt Warner gave it his all for the Cardinals. This debate isn't centralized on the teams, but the quarterbacks instead. We'll debate on which QB has scripted a better, better legacy, Big Ben Roethlisberger or Kurt Warner. What do you think? I mean, I, we know of course I got to go with Big Ben. I'm not taking anything away from Kurt Warner because yeah. some of his numbers in that Super Bowl, second all time. But you just can't match the 78-yard drive that Ben came in with 235 remaining. When you talk about a drive, that means everything. I mean, everything was on the line. The Super Bowl, his second ring was on the line in this, and he didn't disappoint. Yeah, it was pretty impressive, especially when he said that that last throw he threw to Santonio Holmes, he said he wasn't even sure if it was – he was pretty sure it was going to be picked off. So, I mean, it is pretty gutsy, but, I mean, great drive there at the end. But I got to say that Kurt Warner further stamped his legacy. I mean, the guy, he's an ageless wonder. He's only been in the NFL 11 seasons now. And, I mean, a lot of people, don't, a lot of people are familiar already with the story of Kurt Warner, how he started out in a grocery store, you know, throwing paper towels down the aisles. You know, and now he's throwing in NFL football. And the guy's been to three Super Bowls. Granted, he lost, he's lost two of them, but they weren't – it's not like he got blown out either time. Uh, and he's two-time MVP, a Super Bowl MVP. I mean, the guy's done it all. He's a role model. And then what's more is that he has, I think, with this Super Bowl, just that performance, even though they, did, they came up just short, I think he has definitely stamped his fame and stamped his ticket to Canton to be in the Hall of Fame. But, you know, I mean, you have a great point with Warner there, but this was Ben's sixth comeback this season in the fourth quarter overtime. Of course, this last one coming in the Super Bowl. And it was probably the best improv that anybody will ever see on a football field. Scramble left, scramble right, just get open. That's what he did. San Antonio Holmes was actually the third receiver on this, on, this, on this play. And Ben had to make a perfect pass. There were three clone defenders around him. And he wins the Super Bowl for his team. If that, if that ball's picked, it's game over. The Cardinals win the Super Bowl. But instead, he completes the pass. He becomes a hero. And it's like I said, his legacy should be stamped because big players make big plays and big games when it matters most. And Big Ben Roethlisberger did that. He did. But, I mean, I, the, the thing about Big Ben is when I think of quarterbacks who have already stamped their claim to fame, I don't think of Big Ben. I think of people like Tom Brady and I think of people like Kurt Warner. But even the younger QBs, you look at Ben Roethlisberger, I'm not taking away from him. I think he's good. But I don't think, he, you know, I just think he's had a great team that surrounds him because he has made some questionable decisions and he hasn't been – I mean, he doesn't stand out that much in that Super Bowl until that final drive. I mean, you know, he did, he was very mobile in the pocket, and that helped him out a lot. But when you, when you look at out of the two quarterbacks who really stamped their claim to fame, I'm going to have to say Kurt Warner again because he's the first, he's one of seven multiple MVP winners, first of all, and that's a big deal. Only seven other guys, and he's fourth all-time in passer rating with a 93.8. Big Ben on that list is 89.4 passer rating. Roger Staubach, Johnny Unitas, Troy Aikman, Joe Montana, John Elway, Dan Marino. Uh, those guys are all under Kurt Warner in the all-time passer rating. So that says enough right there that he's at the top of the board as far as quarterbacks go. And let's not forget completion percentage, second all-time with 65.4% of his passes. Chad Pennington, the only one above him. The guys had 48 games in which he threw for 300 or more yards. 46% of his games, he's going to throw you 300 yards. I mean, the guy is he's ungodly. When you talk about quarterbacks, the famous quarterbacks that have stamped their legacy, you think of guys like Unitas. And one guy that sticks out to me is Dan Marino. Oh, and yeah. despite his resume, he's in the Hall of Fame. And you know what? He never won the big game. But now, Ben Roethlisberger has already won two Super Bowls. He's the second youngest player, second youngest quarterback, rather, to win two Super Bowls. But uh, granted, Big Ben, I mean, he has nowhere near the kind of numbers that Marino has. But he's played in a totally different style of offense for the majority of his career. Yet that just goes to show how difficult it is to get that Lombardi Trophy and to take that trip to Disney World. It does, and also you mentioned other quarterbacks. I mean, there's plenty who haven't won two Super Bowls. I mean, Steve Young only won one, and we know he was one of the greatest QBs of all time. 
Yeah. But Kurt, Kurt Warner, I'm going to go back to him. 2001, the guy had 4,830 passing yards, which is the second most of all time. And he was 35-8 and eight in a three-year stretch with the St. Louis Rams, which is just unbelievable. Um, I mean, the guy, you know, a lot of people give him a lot of grief because, you know, our buddy Kale here, Kale Padgett, you know, you had to talk about Dan Marino. That's not going to make him very happy. But, you know, I, I've talked to him about this, and he doesn't seem to think Kurt Warner has – is a true Hall of Famer, although he's been to three Super Bowls and won two MVPs, and he because of the passing numbers, they're not way up there, you know, like Dan Marino. But I'm sorry, I think a guy who who's only been in the league for 11 years and put up the numbers, you have to look at the time frame because you also have to look at guys like Jim Brown and you look at Barry Sanders. Those guys didn't play a very long time. You don't have to play, you know, 16 year career to be in the Hall of Fame. You can pe you can play a good 10, 11 years. You know, you, you see it in baseball, Kirby Puckett elected into the Hall of Fame, and he, he didn't get to play out his whole career. I mean, it just it depends on the time frame, what you can do in a certain time span, because not everybody is going to be blessed enough to get a 15-, 16-year career. But at the same time, I mean, stats, there's more, there's more to this legacy than just stats. And Ben Roethlisberger, I mean, second youngest quarterback to win two Super Bowls, like we said, it's about leading your team. It's about being a leader. It's about taking your team to greatness. And Ben Roethlisberger has certainly done that. Yeah, he has. There's no doubt about that. But I think Kurt Warner's done just a great a job. Eight and three in the postseason. I mean, that's a, a postseason legend right there. Eight and three. And two of those losses were Super Bowl losses. And they came very late in the game. You remember back in 2001 when the Patriots or the Cheatriots kicked the game winning field goal. I mean, up until that, you know, the third, fourth quarter, I mean, the Rams were in control of that game. And then here again, last minute drive for the Steelers. And Kurt Warner, I mean, besides that, he's, on, he's eight and three in the postseason throws for 299.1 yards per game in the postseason average, which is the most all-time. That's the highest all-time with a minimum of anyone who's played in at least eight games in the postseason. And again, you, may, you mentioned this earlier, he has the three highest passing games in Super Bowl history. He's thrown for 414, 377 here in Super Bowl 43, and then 365. So the guy in big games, I don't think anybody compares to Kurt Warner. You know, I can agree with you in that aspect, but if you go back to Super Bowl 40, Ben Roethlisberger really did not put up good numbers at all in that game. So you really just have to hand it to him this time. You know, he came into the game, he was more focused, he was more relaxed, and he led his team. He actually led his team to a Super Bowl this time. I mean, the defense really carried them in that Seahawks game. Willie Parker carried them, a couple trick plays in there. But at the same time, I mean, Ben Roethlisberger, you just can't deny that he didn't lead his team this season. Oh, he did. I, I think he is. I think they're both great quarterbacks, but I think at this point, I think Kurt Warner is definitely going into the Hall of Fame and Big Ben surely on his way. Game ball time. Who are you going to give your game ball to, Ron? I mean, you had to see this coming. Steeler fan. We're talking about Ben Roethlisberger. I got to give it to Big Ben. I mean, he rebounded from that Super Bowl in 2003 where he didn't have a good game. Two, two minutes, 35 seconds remaining, leads his team, 78 yards in eight plays, finished the game, 21 for 30, 265 yards, and a touchdown. That's your game ball. My game ball, well, I just got to say the price of coal is rising. I'm going to get my game ball, and Ruben's going to like this, to Cole Hamels. You know why? Because the guy did enough last season, I mean, being the LCS and World Series MVP, leading that team to lefty, gets a three-year deal worth $20.5 million. Uh, the guy's got everything going for him. He only got $500,000 last year, and he made the most of the postseason, and he got a big pay raise. So the co price of coal has definitely gone up. So go ahead and throw that remote away because you're not going to need it. Keep it here for the seventh inning stretch here on 3 and out. <laughs> 